Hi friends, welcome to Singing Secrets with Vox Guru. Today I'm going to let you in on yet another big secret from my musical journey. How did I learn to identify the notes of any song very easily? For example, if I listen to a song like this, Hey, hey, rate aashiki jagamat. I can immediately identify the notes as pa ma pa ga ma ri sa ni ri sa. So how did I develop this skill of translating any song into its swaras? First of all, this skill is very very important for every singer because if you are able to identify the notes of a song, that means the clarity with which you sing the song will be much much better. Remember, clarity begins in the mind. Only if your mind is clear about what the notes are, only then your voice will also execute it with the same amount of clarity. Okay, so let's dive a little deeper into my story and how I learned to identify the notes of any song with ease and if I can do it, so can you. I'm Pratibha Sarathi and you are watching Vox Guru's YouTube series. If you enjoy our videos, please do subscribe to this channel right away and give us that daily dose of motivation so we can keep creating great content for you. Now the first challenge that I faced when I was trying to identify notes is how to identify the root note of the song? How to identify the sa? Because unless I identify the sa correctly, I cannot identify the other notes, right? Now if I am trying to decode a Carnatic song, if somebody is singing a Carnatic song with the tambura in the background, then I can easily find my sa, right? I just need to listen to the tambura, I will be able to place my root note. But if I am trying to decode a film song, there is no constant tambura playing, right? A film song will have chords which are constantly changing. So there is no standard root note that we can hear in the background. So we have to imagine what the root note would be. So how do we do that? What are the exercises we have to do to develop that skill where we listen to a song and immediately we are able to visualize what the sa is going to be. Now to do this, first let us do the reverse process. Let us take a song and try to sing the same song in different scales, different shrutis. So for example, if I am going to sing a song like Pudu vellai ingu Let me try to sing the same line in different shrutis. Okay? So I will give you a sa note and from that note you will have to sing the same tune. So for example, if my sa is here. Sa Let's take a different sa now. Sa Now a different sa. Sa So in this manner we take the same line and we sing them on different random shrutis. So that we are not only remembering the tune, but we are also understanding the frame of reference. We are understanding the relationship between the song and the root note. So if you are able to do this exercise successfully, then you can try the reverse process where you listen to the song and now try to visualize what would have been the sa. I am able to visualize it as sa. Now this was a very easy example. Can you tell me why? Because this particular song started from sa itself, right? So if my sa is sa, then my song is pudu vellai marai. So the song originates from the sa itself. So that makes life easier, right? Because as soon as we place the sa, we just need to start the song from that note. So that is an easier thing to follow. But many songs may not have sa as their first note, right? Remember, sa is not the first note of the song. Sa is just the root note. It is the base note which helps us define the scale of the song. But it may not be the first note of the song itself. Right? Now, for example, let's take a song like Now, this does not start with sa. So, let us now see how to place this song on different root notes. Now, for example, if my sa is here, sa, then I will sing Hey, 
Shiki. If I change my sa to sa, hey hey rati Shiki. Now if I change my sa to sa, hey. So if you noticed, although I was singing Sa, I was not starting the song from that note. I was starting from a higher note, right? So I am doing this very intuitively. I am not translating the notes. I am not trying to identify swaras, nothing. I am just doing it intuitively in such a way that the song feels aligned with the Sa. That alignment is something you have to first feel intuitively. Even before you start translating swaras, first you should intuitively be able to align a song to a particular Shruti. So finally by doing all these experiments and exercises, I was successfully able to identify the root note of any song that I hear. But now came the next part of the challenge. How do you identify the other notes, right? There are so many notes in the song. So how do you break it down and identify each and every note of the song? Now initially I used to follow a very long process for this, where I would listen to each and every note. I would break down the note and I would try to find the same note in the keyboard. So I would try to match the sound and once I match the sound, then I will identify what note it is and note down the swaras. So that is how I used to do for each and every note of the song. So you can imagine a song has thousands of notes, right? So it literally took me an entire day just to identify the notes of one song. That is crazy, right? So I thought to myself, this doesn't feel right. Identifying notes should not be this difficult, right? Is there an easier way? by which I can identify the notes instantly, immediately, without having to go through so much of labor and you know so much of effort. So that is when I realized that the problem was not with identifying the notes. I was able to identify the sound, I was able to match the sound with the keyboard, so my ear was actually quite good. But I was not very familiar with the language of swaras. And that is why I was not able to immediately translate the sound into swaras. So what I really had to work on was to master the language of swaras. I had to get completely comfortable with all the 12 swaras of music. I should know the difference between re1, re2, ga1, ga2, ma1, ma2. I should clearly recognize the sound and be able to translate it immediately. So that was the skill that was required and once I realized it, I started going deeper and deeper into Carnatic music. And I would say that was the biggest game changer for me. Because if you are learning Carnatic music in the right manner, then you will be exposed to so many different ragas, so many different scales. Your ear will be very well trained to recognize the difference between the 12 notes. And even when you are learning compositions like Geetams, Varnams and Kritis, by default, you will be encouraged to identify the notes of the song. So especially at Vox Guru, we are very, very particular. Every time we teach you a new song, we encourage you to try and decode the notes of the song first. You will not be learning just by blindly repeating what the teacher is singing, but you will really apply your mind to identify what notes are being sung. So this is a very, very active part of Carnatic music by default. Okay. So once I got into this journey, then there was no looking back. This whole process of decoding notes suddenly became very, very easy. It opened up a new world for me. So today, any new song that I listen to, I can immediately tell you the swaras without any effort or without any instrument or anything like that. So just in my head, I can identify and tell you the swaras. So if you want to develop this skill of easily identifying the notes of any song, then for some time, don't focus on the songs, but focus on the foundation. Focus on the 12 swarasthanas of music. Get complete clarity on each and every note and train your ear to recognize the difference. So the Carnatic foundation is something that I would highly recommend regardless of which style of music you may be into. Even if you are not a Carnatic student, you are most welcome to join Box Guru's Carnatic curriculum because the way we have designed the Carnatic program, especially the foundation, it is in a very friendly manner and very universal. It is something that can benefit singers of different styles of music. Of course, after a few levels, we will get a little more hardcore into the Carnatic ragas and all of that. But until then, you can definitely pursue this journey even if you are not planning to take up Carnatic music in future. It will be a great experience for you to develop the foundational skills that you need for any form of singing. Like being able to sing in perfect pitch, being able to align to a rhythm, being able to identify the notes of a particular raga and so on. So if you do this foundational course itself, it will give you a great deal of confidence 
in your basic foundation. So if you want to join us in this exciting journey, then please drop us a WhatsApp message right away. I have shared the link in the description. So just say hi and we'll get back to you with all the details of our program. Even if you are an absolute beginner, you are most welcome to kickstart this journey. And on the other hand, if you have learned music in the past, then we will do a quick voice assessment for you and we will understand your skill set and accordingly suggest which is the right place for you to resume from. So I'll be waiting for that WhatsApp message. And don't forget to download the Vox Guru app if you are looking for a reliable source of self-learning as well. So we have plenty of courses out there that you can learn just by the click of a button. So please download the app. It is available both on Android and iOS. I've shared the links of that as well. So let's kickstart this journey together and I'll be waiting for that WhatsApp message. Mm -hmm.